As tensions escalate over the war between Israel and Hamas, anti-Semitism continues to rise across the U.S. Several Jewish institutions were targeted with bomb threats over the weekend, and one man has been arrested for spraying an unknown substance at people and shouting an anti-Semitic phrase at a synagogue in Washington. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins us live now from Washington with more on this. Uh, Nicole, what are you hearing from law enforcement about these threats and the synagogues that were targeted? Yeah, Chanel Vlad, hundreds of bomb threats sent law enforcement racing to the scene of synagogues nationwide Saturday. And states like New Jersey, California, and Arizona, even here in D.C., some services were even canceled as a result. Now, these instances of swatting or making hoax phone calls to alert emergency services are unfortunately relatively commonplace even for synagogues. We are, of course, on heightened alert in this country following the October 7th Hamas terrorist attack. But these instances instances of swatting predate this year. We first saw a spike at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we saw this past weekend certainly is an escalation. But speaking with local law enforcement, there are two big takeaways. The first, every phone call, every threat is taken seriously by law enforcement. So no officer presuming here that a call is simply an incident of swatting. And secondly, places of worship are advised to work with local law enforcement to develop a strategy for how to respond in the case of a threat. Uh, so what is the FBI, uh, Homeland Security, and the DOJ uh, doing to help mitigate this danger? I mean, we are on heightened alert. We've seen Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI, numerous times, Nicole, as you know, testify before members of Congress about the rise in anti-Semitism and now Islamophobia. Um, so what is being done practically on the ground? Yeah, Vlad, as recently as last week, the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, and NCTC, the National Counterterrorism Center, putting out a bulletin warning that calls for violence will probably increase in the days leading up to the holidays. In fact, a December 12th bulletin obtained by our colleague Catherine Herridge goes on to say that lone offenders seeking to attack public gatherings will probably rely on simple weapons to target easily accessible events, firearms, knives, and vehicles to target public gatherings, but adds that Threat actors could also leverage nonviolent tactics, including hoax bomb and active shooter threats to disrupt or delay operations of targeted facilities or gatherings. Now, lone wolf attacks always pose a challenge to law enforcement, federal law enforcement included, but there's a pool of money reserved to bolster physical security of nonprofits, including places of worship, to the tune of over $300 million in 2023, and synagogues can use that grant money to obtain better security systems, cameras, fencing, training, and even private security, federal law enforcement, the Department of Homeland Security, encouraging that and you mentioned a couple of things people are doing but what are you hearing from Jewish community leaders about how they're responding to this what they can do to protect themselves yeah, Chanel, it goes without saying that no amount of security can make communities facing this sort of uptick in threats entirely whole, especially amid the holidays. Now, Jewish leaders are pushing Congress to pass emergency funding for that nonprofit security grant program so places of worship can continue to rely on federal funding in 2024. But I've spoken to Jewish leaders who stress that while these kinds of anti-Semitic attacks are not new, they're being taken very seriously. But as religious leaders balance this sort of hospitality with prudence, balance being a place of welcome with also protecting their congregants. The overlying message here is that no one should live in fear of exercising their faith, especially this holiday season. All right, Nicole Skanga reporting for us. Nicole, thank you.